Hey y'all, how y'all doing? How y'all feeling? How y'all vibing? The in-betweens. And in today's video, as you can tell by the title, we are going to be doing, well, we're going to be making a puffer tote bag. And, and yeah, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, tell a friend to tell a friend, come meet me here. And without further ado, let's get into this video without wasting any time, without wasting any breath. Let's get into this video. Okay, so for this video, there are like a few things that you need. And I wanna start off by saying you need two pairs of scissors. One for, for cutting out paper, like craft scissors and all of that, and another one for the actual fabric. But I don't think we're going to need to cut any paper or stuff like that. So I'm just gonna put these aside and act like I didn't say that. Okay, okay. So, gonna need a pair of scissors that you use purely for fabric cutting then you're going to need a ruler and I just use this one because it's a ruler a ruler is a ruler like a 30 centimeter ruler would work or even a 15 it doesn't really matter as long as you can draw a straight line with it then you need it and then I'm also gonna be using my measuring tape but this one is mainly for like measuring out size or like the length that's longer than 30 centimeters and I don't necessarily need it to be straight so that's what it's for and of course of course we can't make uh, a puffer tote without the actual fabric so I have already started cutting my pieces out don't judge me don't judge me but I'm using cotton twill I'm using cotton twill in a lavender color apparently that's what the that's what the store done labeled it as so that's what I'm gonna call it but it's it's in a lavender color cotton twill and also gonna need polyfill which is kind of like pillow stuffing basically so yeah and obviously you're just gonna need some thread and i'm gonna use white thread today because i don't have thread that matches the color of the fabric but that's what you need so far and as we go through i'll kind of maybe mention the things you need hey from voice over Okay, so the first thing you're going to start with is measuring out 26 squares on your fabric and each square having 24 centimeter sides and you're going to cut all of those out. Since there's 26 of them, you're going to pin them together in twos, making sure that the right sides of the fabric are facing each other. Once you've done that, you're going to have 13 layered squares. Now you're going to sew along the sides of the squares, but not all four sides, just three, so you can add the stuffing. If you are sewing on a sewing machine, then you know three stitches forward, three stitches back. In order to secure the stitch, then continue sewing like normal using a straight stitch. Over here you'll notice that I leave the needle in the fabric, then lift the press of foot to change direction and that's so that I don't lose my last stitch and it keeps everything the same. Also don't forget to only sew three sides of the squares so you can add stuffing. You'll also notice that I backstitch at the end and that's just to keep it secured once again. Then from here on, you just repeat the same process for all the squares until they're all sewn shut on three sides. Moving on to the stuffing part, you're going to take your stuffing and make sure that you don't use too much so it isn't too densely stuffed. You're going to put it into the open side and once you've stuffed your squares just pin the side so that the stuffing doesn't come out then sew that side close. Here I'm just showing that I didn't densely stuff the squares and that they are about the same size. Repeat until all of them have been stuffed 
Okay, so you're probably wondering where the small rectangles come from and I can explain because when I initially started making the bag, I forgot about the sides of the bag and it's not a train smash because everything still works out. Instead of having 13 big stuffed squares, you're going to need only 8 and then you're going to take the big squares before stuffing them and you're going to cut them in the middle so that you have three rectangles and you're going to cut them in the middle so that you have two rectangles from one big square once you've done that just go back in and make sure only three sides of the rectangles are sewn so you can add stuffing all in all you're supposed to have eight big squares and six rectangles that are all stuffed Once this done, you're going to measure out some straps on your piece of fabric. With this step, it's up to you how long you want your straps to be. I made mine 60 centimeters long and 10 centimeters wide. Once you've cut out the strap pieces, then you're going to fold each of them so that the right side is inside and you're going to pin along the side leaving the top and the bottom open once that's done you're going to take a safety pin and pin it into one end and feed it through until the right side is now on the outside facing you iron this down to make it flat once you've done that i suggest cutting any pieces of thread that were loose or even any fraying from the fabric you used before moving on to the next step. Once you're done with that, you're going to take two square pieces and join them together and you're going to do that until you have four pairs of squares. After you've pinned them together, just sew them together to create a rectangle. Okay, so at this point I was tired and I forgot to film me showing you how to sew them together in order to get the bag shape but I'll put up a little illustration. So after sewing the squares together you're going to pin and sew the small rectangles together but on the shorter ends. After that's done you're going to start putting together the bag and to do that you're going to take two of the big rectangles made from the square and sew them together on the lengthier side. Once you've done that, then you're going to take the small rectangles and sew them to match the sides and at the bottom. Now that you've sewn the body of the bag together, it's time for the lining to come into play. Here just ignore the straps because they are pinned for reference on how the bag is going to look eventually. You're going to take either the same fabric or some lining fabric for the inside. Here I'm showing some black lining because it's the only lining I had. You're going to measure the back, front, side and bottom and cut out lining in those measurements. And don't forget to add seam allowance so that it actually fits. With this step, we're basically remaking the bag just without the puff. Okay, so I know I'm using a different fabric for the lining but it's because I didn't really like the black interior and this was the only other fabric I had that had some white in it and I didn't want it to go to waste, so yeah. Now over here is where you finish off the bag, you're going to take the lining and make sure that the rough ends of the lining are facing the rough ends of the bag. Basically, all the sewn sides must be inside inside, if that makes sense. Then, once you've done that, you're going to fold the top of the lining and the top of the bag inwards in order to create a clean finish. You're going to pin them together and you're also going to add the ends of the straps to the mix, making sure that from the middle of the bag, each strap is 13 centimeters from the center in order to create a symmetrical look. Once you've pinned everything together, you're going to sew it together and it should look something like this. 